My grandmother came, my mom said came from home today. Well, my grandma always told my grandpa that no matter what, these kids are going to be in school. They, when they finally settled in Oregon, my mom told me that grandmother would never let them out of school, especially to work. We were seeing these other kids who got like a fair amount of education and like were doing well for themselves. So she wanted that for my mom and her brothers and sisters. So she never let them migrate anything. They were always in school. My other grandmother, well, they were migrant workers as well, and they were used to, like, having to survive, so they always had the kids work with them. So my dad never got to stay at a, like, have a foundation of education when he was younger because of the constant loop. And neither did my aunts and uncles. A lot of them were able to finish school because of the constant migration. My other grandma was more focused on having the family together and surviving. Then my other grandmother, who was more, I think, trying to modernize herself into the American culture. My dad said education. They're starting to think that you know, education is good because they were the generation who didn't really need an education to get a job. But now they're starting to see things change slowly. So now, at that side, they're slowly changing. So yeah, we all like you guys. Are good. I thought college was for people who just wanted to better themselves or like get somewhere, I guess, have a better job and career and do to do something that they love, like if they love to do computers or nursing or something like that. When I was thinking about going to college, I thought it was first it was going to be really easy, but then... Oh, I had to do the college application by myself. <laughs> and my, my advisors never helped. No. I wouldn't say because of my ethnicity they judged, but I felt like that, that was part of it. Because a lot of the times when I went to them asking about colleges, they had little or no information about it. And if, all they could say is go to community college because other kids who are with my ethnicity, a big chunk of them who had at least 4.0 GPAs who were eligible to go to a regular university, still went to a community college despite that fact. Mm -hmm. And that's what they expected out of me. Kind of like second, like second rating me, almost like, you know, while the other kids, they encouraged them to go to the local university the white kids? Yeah. They weren't the ones who said, fill out your FAFSA or anything. They weren't those people. It was more like, they just said, these are the things you do to go to college. Go on this website, make this account, sign this PIN, make your parents make electronic signature. And then I had to call the universities or the, the actual website themselves and say, how do I do this? How do I do that? I don't know what to do. Europe, I think, was the only way I actually got interested in other schools. Gear Up is a program where they encourage kids to go to college. Anybody who's a first generation or whatever financially struggled family to like go to college and everything. It's a good program. And I went there and I saw like I met somebody from the University of Oregon. I said, Oh my school doesn't have pamphlets of this and she's like, Really? Oh my god, I take it, I'll tell you everything about this. I swear <laughs> So she gave me the number to Oregon Hall and everything to call them. My counselor didn't give me that. And my counselor, when I told him about it, I said, I want to go to these other universities. And he was kind of like, really? Well, are you sure you can financially handle it? I'm like, you don't need to ask that question. I'm doing the fast stuff like everybody's doing. <laughs> and he was just like, oh, she's like, she's like, oh, you did the fast stuff? Okay, okay, okay. We should, let, let's do it then. And then he's like, what schools do you want to do? I said, oh, Oregon Atlantic. And he said, like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know, I don't, I haven't really looked at those schools close enough. And I was kind of wondering, what do you mean you haven't looked at them close enough? I mean, I bet, I think they send out emails <laughs> telling me, like, you have high school seniors, I will come and visit the school. 
for calling. My teachers had to help me. I didn't know what was going on. Basically, we had like cheerleaders at our school, which is basically a bunch of teachers who had to educate us about school. They were like proud alumni. I was lucky, like around June or July, that people were still here. I was like, I had to always call people and say, hey, I need help with this loan thing. What do my parents need to do? What is it that, what, what is it that I need to do? And when is this date? One time I think we have to do the parent loan and my dad doesn't know how to really use a computer. And like, one lady asked like, you can do everything online. I'm like, yeah, but my dad can't use it. She's like, well, what do your parents do? I'm like, it's none of your business. And I've had expectations where people are like, what's wrong, your parents can't use technology? And I said, no. And what are you, got to, what are you gonna say about that? Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're stupid. So I have expectations to like, have my family be the modern family that they have to be, that they're expected to be. Like my dad is expected to be the guy who has to work in an office. If I say he works in a warehouse, people kind of like, oh. And it makes me have the feeling like, are you looking down on him just because he works at a warehouse? You know, the first thing I thought was that nobody was going to come with their parents. Everyone's going to come single because we're all big people now. We're 19 years old. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> like, everybody came with their parents, and like, I didn't come with my parents because I didn't want to pay an extra $36 because I didn't have the money. I had to pitch in the money. Introduction was, I guess, okay, up to the point where some kid, like, we were doing our SOS, and some kid asked me, like, turned to me and said, Do you have a burrito? Have a burrito. Does it look like I have a burrito in my backpack? We had sandwiches for lunch. <laughs> I'm pretty sure any Latino around here, if somebody went to them and said, Do you have a burrito in your backpack? They'd be like, What? <laughs> like, as soon as my mom came back, as soon as I was done registering my classes, I wanted to jump back in the car. <laughs> At that moment, I was thinking because of that experience, both my college life is like this, where people are doing stuff, and nobody's like really friendly or whatever, I'm going to transfer. <laughs> That's what I first thought. But then I guess it changed my first day of school. I met Claudia actually at Advisor, and she actually like made me feel comfortable. She said, you know, if you need somebody, you know, somebody to like, because you know, if you're alone and you want somebody because you're away from your family, like she could understand me that I'm away from my family. She didn't even have to ask me. Like she knew right away that I was just without my family. She knows my culture, our culture is we're always family together, so get tight. And now that I'm separated from them, I don't know, like I don't know what to do. And she said, I can always be there for you. And like our door is always open. And she's like, come on this retreat. I promise you it'll be fun. And I said, okay, how bad can it be? So I went and it was just a blast. So I slowly started like making friends. And even though it was like a short retreat, like, I met my best friend because of Omar. That's the only way that changed my mind that I love the university. Is that I have friends here who are like, willing to support me at hard times. If I didn't go to Omaha, I don't know who I have. So, yeah.